Okay, here we go. I haven't done this for a long time. It's kind of like putting this thing on for the first time. Oh, there we go. I, this, I guess, was kind of the song that changed everything for us. You know, we um, we were kind of a punky, raw, talking heads kind of band until this point. But I always thought we could sort of be something more, you know, something more sort of grand and sophisticated. And I wasn't sure, quite sure what it was until I went and saw a customer Nougars in the dark playing a little bar in Hamilton, Ontario. There used to be a strip joint called the Brass Rail. <laughs> and this band was playing. I knew a little bit about them through our manager, um, uh, her, his name again, way back from, from Matt Martha and the Muffins, um, Carl Finkel, because they were both on Virgin. So you got to check out this band from England. And I did, and that night changed everything for me because... I went home, wrote this song. And if you heard the Spoons before this point, and you know after, it was a completely different band. And I was really inspired by how they combined drum machines and live drums and, and synths, and went for a more sort of a classical sound. That uh, because Sandy and I had come from sort of progressive rock, you know, um, Genesis type big epic songs. And when the '80s came, we kind of dropped that one, kind of punky and raw. And, and this allowed us to sort of go back to our roots a little bit, show that we had some chops and then some some drama in our music, and um, this is the song that did it. I remember seeing those guys, I grabbed Rob's keyboard next morning, I'm not a keyboard player, and the very first thing I did was go, da -da -da. And, and Rob, I remember Rob saying, that is so stupid, I would never have thought of it, so simple, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and be not, not being a keyboard player, and that would be my mantra from then on, just simple and hooky, and that was kind of the beginning of, of this. This song came out before this album, and so it was kind of the precursor to that, which, brought out all those other songs, but there were a couple other songs that I wrote that sort of OMD-inspired morning that made it on here, like like Blow Away and, and No Electrons. Yeah, it's funny hearing that. It still sounds so, um, so sort of young and naive, but sort of timeless in a way. We, we never thought this would do anything. You know, if you look at a chart from the time, it was like, there was Led Zeppelin, Queen, The Who, that kind of stuff. So how are we ever going to get on the radio with something like this? I, I never believed in, in a million years I would do anything. I thought we were just another band that's going to be destined to play basements and local high, you know, high school gigs and that kind of thing. Because we just come out of, out of high school pretty well. Um, so it was a nice surprise when people liked it, our, our little crazy creation. Uh, the only thing else that was on the radio was kind of like it, I guess, that introduced people to drum machines and sparse keyboards and that stuff was, um, I guess, Soft Cell, Tainted Love know that so American ears are getting a little bit more eclectic in their tastes um, still I mean it didn't really sink in I think the first time we were at a, at a Sandy and I was sitting at a, at a light somewhere and I mean hearing a song on the radio is one thing but hearing it from the car next to you at a light like saying where's it coming from and we were playing it in the car and we heard it again sort of out of sync next to us is wow like that, that was you know when, when that happens stuff like that it sounds kind of silly but that's like when you think anything's possible like the, the world's opening up for us and we might possibly have a career, you know. This is the first thing I think we did that I thought we were sort of be able to compete with the international stuff that was out there that we admired, you know, like the Simple Minds and the Duran Durans and that kind of thing. Um, this this song, um, it landed in the hands of John Hunter, who happened to be touring, I think it was with Nazareth, and he had produced bands like um, Roxy Music, Japan, and there's, I think, a similarity between what John did with us and he did with Japan. Because before he worked with them, they were very raw and punky. You could listen to Adolescent Sex and that stuff. It's kind of more yelled and sung and, and very guitar heavy. And they were going for that Roxy sound when they worked with him. And there's a lot of similarities between what he did with us. You, know, you could listen to Stick Figure Neighborhood, which is more Talking Heads and Lena Lovage and Devo. All of a sudden, we've become, you know, sort of a classic synth band. Um, so that's what John Punter brought to it, and he happened to be on the road in Canada, and Larry from our distributor, Quality, just said, here, listen to these guys, put a cassette in his pocket, they were on the road to some gig with Nazareth that he was producing, and within months it was set up, you know, it was, it, it's funny how these things just happened, you know, it's like one puzzle piece after another, without really working too hard at it, but that's, that song pretty well opened up a lot of doors for us, I think. It's, um, like I said, a complete surprise. It wasn't like we were recording this going, okay, this is going to be a big hit, hit single. We were just thinking, we don't even care if it gets airplay. It's so strange and weird, but it's us, you know, we're happy to, to go along for the ride but not expect anything. And um, 
we were sure proven wrong. I guess. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny to listen. I'm trying to listen to something that really bugged me when we were recording this. Because when we went into the studio, John Potter had the idea this should be the B-side. Symmetry, which is now the B-side, he thought that was the hit. But there was something in, you know, unmistakable by, by the chemistry in this thing that slowly realized he was wrong. and I kind of knew it from the beginning. But there's a funny thing. Sandy had these things called Taurus bass, bass pedals, which were left over from our progressive rock Genesis kind of days. And that's that big drone here at the beginning, that she played those on the way, and then Rob played his drone on his new synth, and they were so out of tune to my ears, I wanted nothing to do with the song from the beginning of the recording. I, it was like me against the band and fighting with John. It's, I just scrapped this song, it's, it's junk, right? Luckily it all sorted itself out, and here we are. I don't hear it, I'm just, I don't <laughs> It sounds in tune to me. We wrote this song, and Someday, yeah, same on day. the very first day we ever yeah. worked with Jim Barnes. Within 40 minutes of meeting Jim.